Hello everyone, welcome back to our math room. In this video, we are going to discuss another lesson in basic calculus and it is all about infinite limits. What is the learning objective? At the end of the lesson, you should be able to evaluate infinite limits. Let's take a look at this following. There are functions that when we evaluate their limit to the use of the table of values or by illustrating their graphs, you will notice an increasing and decreasing pattern of the value that the function approaches as we move closer and closer to a particular x value. Let's say on this table of values, as we approach 0 from the left, we can see a decreasing values of f of x. On this graph, as we move going to 0 from the right, the graph goes upward continuously. This cases when the function increases or decreases without bound is called infinite limits. So when we say infinite limits, the function values decrease or increase without bounds as the independent variable gets closer and closer to a certain fixed number. Consider we have a limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches c. Let's say this function is already in its simplest form. If we try to evaluate their individual limits, and when we get any non-zero limit for the numerator and zero limit for the denominator, the limit of this particular function is either positive infinity, if the values of f of x increase without bound, it is negative infinity if the value of f of x decreases without bound. Or the limit does not exist if the one-sided limits are approaching the opposite infinity directions. To better understand this concept, let's say we have this example. Say we are asked to find the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0. If we try to use substitution for this given function, then the limit of the numerator is equal to 1 and the limit of the denominator becomes 0. So we have 1 over 0 which is undefined. Hence, the limit does not exist. However, if you will be applying the numerical method where you will construct a table of values, we can actually solve for the limit of this function. Let us now list down the values approaching 0 from the left and approaching 0 from the right then we evaluate their corresponding y values and observe what happens to the values or what is the behavior of the f of x values. So for the left-hand limit, we have these values negative 1, negative 0 0.92, negative 0 0.5, and negative 0 0.1. So if we substitute each x value to the given function, we have the following f of x, negative 1, negative 1.08696, negative 2, and negative 10. Now, let us have the right-hand limit. So when we approach 0 from the right, we have 1, 0 0.98, 0 0.4, and 0 0.01. So the values of f of x are 1, 1.02041, and 100. Now, let us observe what happens to the values of f of x as we approach 0 from the left. As we can see here, the values are decreasing down to the negative infinity. The values are decreasing without bound. Hence, we can conclude that the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 from the left is equal to the negative infinity. On the other hand, observe that as we move closer and closer to 0 from the right, the values of f of x are increasing up to the positive infinity. So the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 from the right is equal to positive infinity. Since the one-sided limits approach different directions to infinity, we can conclude that the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 does not exist. We can actually check if this answer is right by looking at the graph of this function. So here is the graph of the function 1 over x. It is obvious that when we approach 0 from the left, the graph goes downward continuously without bound. While when we approach 0 from the right, the graph moves upward continuously without bound. Hence, 
it is right to say that the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 does not exist. From this given example, we can now have the theorems for infinite limits. If n is any positive integer, then the limit of 1 over x raised to n as x approaches 0 from the right is equal to positive infinity. So when we approach 0 from the right, whatever value of n, as long as it is a positive integer, then the limit is positive infinity. On the other hand, if we have the limit of 1 over x raised to n, as x approaches 0 from the left, the answer is negative infinity if the value of n is odd. And the answer is positive infinity if n is even. Let's have examples for this. Let's say we're asked to find the limit of 1 over x raised to 2 as x approaches 0 from the right. The first thing you need to check is the value of n, which is the exponent of x. Here, the exponent is a positive even number, and what we are approaching is 0 from the right. The answer here is always positive infinity, based on the previous theorem that we have discussed. Next, we have the limit of 1 over x raised to 2 as x approaches 0 from the left. In this case, since the n value is even, here, the answer is still positive infinity. We can verify if these answers are correct by looking at the graph of the function. So as we approach 0 from the right, the graph goes upward continuously. Same with when we approach 0 from the left, the graph goes upward continuously. Let's have another example. Find the limit of 1 over x cubed as x approaches 0 from the right. Looking at the given function, we have an add exponent. And here, we are approaching 0 from the right. Therefore, the limit of this function as x approaches 0 from the right is positive infinity. Another example, find the limit of 1 over x cubed as x approaches 0 from the left. Looking at the exponent, it is odd, and we are approaching 0 from the left using the theorem here we have an answer of negative infinity. And again, we can verify if the answers are correct by having the graph of the function. As we can see on this graph, as we approach 0 from the right, the graph goes upward, so it's positive infinity. When we approach 0 from the left, the graph goes downward continuously, therefore it's negative infinity. How about this problem? Find the limit of 2 over x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the right. To solve for the limit of this problem, we can no longer use the previous theorem. Hence, we need to have another theorem for infinite limits. So theorem number 2. If c is any real number, and if the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 0, and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to k, where k is any constant not equal to 0, then, if k is greater than 0, and if f of x is approaching 0 through x values greater than c, or from the right, the answer is positive infinity. If k is greater than 0, and if f of x is approaching 0 through x values less than c, then the answer is negative infinity. If k is less than 0, and if f of x is approaching 0, through x values greater than c, the limit is negative infinity. If k is less than 0, and if f of x is approaching 0 through x values less than c, then the answer is positive infinity. There are four conditions that you need to take note in theorem number 2, and you might think that they are hard to understand or they hard to remember, so let us have the shortcut. To easily remember the four conditions, just always look at the pattern by looking at the limits of numerator and denominator and C value. If the numerator's limit is any constant greater than 0, let's say 1, 2, and 3, we'll be having plus for the numerator and the denominator is 0. When we approach C from the right, as you can see, both signs are positive, then the limit is positive infinity. Next is, when the limit of the numerator is a positive number, 
and the limit of the denominator is 0. And when you approach C from the left, as you can see, we have positive and then we have negative. When we divide these two, the answer is negative. Then, the limit is negative infinity. Third condition, if the limit of the numerator is a negative number, let's say negative 1, negative 2, and the denominator is 0, and you approach C from the right, we have negative divided by positive that gives us a negative value. Then the limit is negative infinity. Fourth condition, if we have a limit of the numerator which is a negative value, and we approach C from the left, negative divided by negative is positive, therefore the limit is positive infinity. Let us now have examples for this. Example number 1, evaluate the limit of 2 over x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the right. The first thing we need to do is to find the limit of the numerator and denominator separately. So by substitution, we have the limit of 2 as x approaches 3 from the right is equal to 2. As we all know, the limit of a constant is a constant itself. And the value of the limit of the numerator is a positive value. Next is the limit of the denominator. Limit of x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the right. By substitution, 3 minus 3, the answer is 0. As we can see here, we have 2 over 0 wherein the numerator has a positive sign and we approach the value of c which is 3 from the right. So positive over positive gives us a positive sign. Therefore, the limit is positive infinity. Let us verify if the answer is correct using the graph of this function. So the graph of this function is this one. And as we can see, as we approach 3 from the right, the graph moves upward continuously. Hence, it is right to say that the limit is positive infinity. Another example, let us find the limit of 3 minus x over x minus 5 as x approaches 5 from the left. Same procedure to be done, let us find the limit separately of the numerator and denominator. Let's begin with the numerator. By substitution, we will be having 3 minus 5, the answer is negative 2. So this is the limit of the numerator. For the limit of the denominator, we have 5 minus 5, this gives us 0. So we have negative 2 over 0. Since we have negative sign here, and we approach 5 from the left, which is also negative, negative over negative gives us positive infinity. Let us check if this is right. So as we can see in this graph, when we approach 5 from the left, so from the left going to 5, the graph moves upward continuously. Hence, the answer is correct, positive infinity. Another example, find the limit of 2x plus 1 over x minus 4 as x approaches 4 from the left. So we find the limit of the numerator. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 gives us 9. For the denominator, 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. So the limit of the numerator is positive and we approach 4 from the left. Positive divided by negative gives us a negative sign. Therefore, the limit is negative infinity. Let us check if this is right. So here is the graph of the function. When we approach 4 from the left, left going to point 4, as we can see, the graph moves downward continuously without bound. So the answer is correct, negative infinity. After giving you examples, this is not the time to check your own understanding. You may pause the video to answer the following problems. Let's check your work. First one, the answer is positive infinity. It is only because this one is positive integer and here you are approaching zero from the right. So positive infinity. Next, the answer here is negative infinity because the exponent is odd and you approach zero from the left. Here, the answer is negative infinity. It's because you will be having negative over positive and that is negative infinity. 
And last, we have positive infinity because you will be having positive value for the numerator over positive and that gives us positive infinity. Did you get all of this correctly? Great job! What are the important things that you need to remember? When the function values decrease or increase without bounds, as the independent variable gets closer and closer to a certain fixed number, then it is called an infinite limit. There are theorems that you need to take note. And here are the theorems. That will be all for this video. I hope you have learned a lot. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. But if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will be updated with the latest video tutorials in math here in our math room. Bye everyone! See you on our next video!